Welcome to Fun with IUPAC Nomenclature, Out Canes, Out Keens, and Out Kinds, or Out Kinds of Fun. Let's name some Out Canes, Out Keens, and Out Kinds, shall we? First, a little summary of the rules of IUPAC nomenclature when naming these hydrocarbons. First, we're going to find the parent chain. So the parent chain is going to be the longest hydrocarbon chain that contains the highest priority functional group. With alkanes, it's just simply the longest chain possible that we can make on our hydrocarbon. For alkanes and alkynes, we need to make sure that includes the double or triple bond, respectively. Next, I would argue that numbering the chain is the trickiest part. So we want to number them such that the substituents are encountered as soon as possible on the parent chain. So we want them to have as low numbers as possible when we make our IUPAC name. If going from two different directions, you encounter a substituent at the same time, if you have a tie, well then you're just gonna go into the next substituent and the next substituent after that, so on and so forth. If they are all tied, regardless of which direction you go on the parent chain, then we're gonna to resort to alphabetical order. Finally, before we make our name, we're going to alphabetize the substituents. And a note about that, if you have two or three or four of a substituent, you'll use di, tri, or tetra. However, these do not count when alphabetizing. The only prefix that we will actually use when alphabetizing is iso, such as isopropyl and isobutyl. Then finally, we've done all the work. We just need to combine and enjoy. So let's get to it. First, we have a table of the prefixes for 1 through 12 carbon chains, ever so important when naming alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. We also have the respective name of the alkane. So if we only have single bonds and you've got 1 carbon through 12 carbons, we're going to have either methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane, undecane, or dodecane, respectively. Now then, let's use these to actually come up with some names. Let's get naming! Here we have a fun-looking alkane. If you'd like to, please feel free to take a moment to pause to see if you can name this yourself. Otherwise, let's get to it. So first, we're going to find the parent chain. And the longest chain that we have is going to span through this path on our alkane. Okay. This chain has 12 carbons in it. So this is an example of a dodecane. Up next, we're going to number. Now then, there's two possible ways that we could number this. We could either start up here and go one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or we could start numbering one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So which one of these is right? Now remember, when we're doing our numbering, we want to make sure that we encounter substituents as soon as possible. If we do this the top way, we encounter a substituent at position two. If we do it starting from the bottom left, we have, uh, encounter a substituent at position three. So which one's better? Well, the lower number, position two. So there we have all of our numbers. And I want to note, it would be, we would have the same molecule if we started from here instead. So it doesn't matter which of these two carbons we start at. Uh, regardless, because there's free rotation up here, it would be the same molecule. Okay, now then, let's find our substituents. We have not one, but two methyl groups. So this is going to be 2,5-dimethyl. But wait, there's more. What do we call this group coming off right here? This is an isopropyl group. Isopropyl groups kind of look like a Mercedes-Benz logo. Iso always means that you end with this sort of, I like to think of almost as a peace sign at the end, so we have the split end at the end of our group. The same thing would happen with an isobutyl group, except we'd have an additional carbon before that split. So six isobutyl. Up next, oh, sorry. I mean isopropyl. All right, up next we have this chain down here that has one, two, three carbons on it. So that's just going to be a seven. And then our prefix for three carbons is prop. 
Instead of saying propane, we're going to say propyl. Anytime you have a substituent coming off of your main chain, just end it in, if it's an alkyl substituent, just end it in YL. All right, then we have this group right here. This is a sec butyl group. And you can use parentheses here since the sec technically modifies this butyl side chain. Um, it's not necessary, but um, oftentimes you will see that. And then finally, we have this right here. 10 position, so this is 10 chloro. All right, now we need to alphabetize, and this is a decent number of substituents that we have here. So when alphabetizing, remember we don't use di or tri, we don't use sec or tert. Um, the only prefix that we'll use is iso. So when we're alphabetizing these, we've got our M from methyl, we've got I from isopropyl, we've got P from propyl, We've got B from sec butyl, and we've got C from chloro. So when we put these in order, what's going to come first? Well, the BU of butyl. So I like to put in parentheses afterwards the order these are going to come in. So we've got that first. Up next, we've got chloro with C. And we've got isopropyl with I. Then we've got C methyl with an M. And then finally, propyl is going to come last. So when we write this all out, what we're going to get as our name is 8-sec-butyl, 10-chloro, 6-isopropyl, 2,5-dimethyl, 7-propyl, and then after we do all of our substituents that are offset with dashes and with their locants in there, we're going to jump right into our parent name. So the parent name, again, is dodecane. So we end up with the name... 8-sec-butyl, 10-chloro, 6-isopropyl, 2,5-dimethyl, 7-propyl, dodecane. Woo! That one is a doozy. Here we have a cycloalkane, as evidenced by this ring here, which means when we name this, we're going to include the word, and hear me out, cyclo. Okay, so this is a cyclo what? Well, rings help us to figure out the longest chain because, well, our longest chain has to include our ring, and so we're just basically numbering the ring. And we're going to number it so that we minimize the numbers on the substituents. The way to do that is to number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because if we number it this way, we have a substituent at 1, 2, and 4. If we tried it in another direction, let's say we started at the chlorine, it would be 1, 2, 3. And notice here it's 1, 2 versus 1, 3. Well, 1, 2 is better. So this is going to be, the numbers on the inside are the correct way of numbering this chain. Not chain, ring. Because this has seven carbons in it, it's going to be a cycloheptane. Hept for seven. And now let's do our substituents. So our substituents are going to be, we've got this two carbon chain here, so it's an ethyl. So it's going to be one ethyl. We've got... This group right here, four carbons, and it ends with that P sign. So that's going to be two, and this is an isobutyl. And then finally, we have four chloro. Great. So now when we put these in alphabetical order, it's E versus I versus C. So the chloro is going to come first, then the E from ethyl, and then the I from isobutyl. So the name is going to be 4-chloro-1-ethyl-2-isobutyl, and then we're going to jump into the parent name, which is just, again, cycloheptane. And we've done this cyclic alkane. Let's move on. All right, now let's name some alkenes and alkynes. This is very, very similar. If you can name alkanes, you can name alkenes and alkynes. The only difference is alkenes, molecules that have double bond in them, and in ene, E-N-E, -E, and alkynes, molecules that have a triple bond in them, and in Y-N-E, ein. Okay, so other things to note, you need to specify the location of the double bonds or triple bonds. That's really important. And this is only the real difference in numbering. These actually help make numbering easier because we're going to number so that we prioritize the double bond or triple bond. 
Interestingly, if you have a double and triple bond, you number it so that you prioritize the double bond. And what I mean by that is we want to make sure that we have the lowest number possible on our alkene on the double bond or on the triple bond. So we'll do an example of that actually, well, right now. One other thing to note is that if you have um, two or more double or triple bonds, we're going to need to use our prefixes di, tri, tetra, etc. if you have two, three, or four of them respectively. And then finally, um, we're going to add, for some reason, IUPAC has us add in an A just to make it sound phonetically nicer if there's um, a diene or a triene. So let's look at this example right here. Are we going to number it like this? One, two, three. Or like this, one, two, three, four. Now notice that if we number it from the left, we end up getting to the double bond more quickly. That's what we want. We want to get to the double bond as quickly as possible. So this is the right way. And on the other side, this is the frowny face way. This is not how we're going to do it. So let's add in our numbers. Okay, so we've got 10 carbons. So this is going to have the prefix dec. And since there's two double bonds, we're going to add an A to it. So this will be a deca diene. Now then, again, we need to specify where the double bonds are. So there's two different ways we can do this. We can either put the numbers right before the um, diene. So this would be 3, 6. Diene, we always need to offset our numbers um, with hyphens. Or instead, we could also call this 3, 6, decadiene. Both are perfectly fine. All right, let's do some examples. With this one, we can number the parent chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or we could start from the other direction and make it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Only one of these can possibly be correct. Which one is right? Well, in both cases, we get to the double bond at carbon 4. So we need to go to our next priority, which is making sure the substituents have as low a number as possible. So as a result, we're going to use the top set of numbers because here we encounter this fluoro group at 3 as opposed to encountering this isopropyl group at 4. So the top way is going to win. So the parent name is going to be, we have our um, double bond at position 4. So this is going to be an opt for in. Or you could also call it 4-octene. Just personal preference. I always like to include the number right before the ene, just because it helps me as a visual cue to remember where the double bond is at. Now then, our substituents, we only have two substituents here. We have a 3-fluoro right here. And we have... Again, an isopropyl, and it's going to be at 5, so it's 5 isopropyl. Great. So our full IUPAC name is going to be, when we alphabetize, and again, F is going to come before I in our alphabetical order. So the name is going to become 3-fluoro-5-isopropyl, and we'll jump into our parent name, oct 4 -een. Or you could also name it instead, we could put the 4 dash right here as well. Either way is correct. Woohoo! We have a diene here. All right, so this is actually going to give us a visual cue to help number this because are we going to start up here where we have to wait one, two, three, four carbons to get to a double bond? No, uh, why do that when we could instead start here? We've already had we're already at a double bond. Great. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Cool. Okay. So our parent name is going to be deco16diene. And again, we're going to add in this A here just for phonetics because 
decadine sounds more phonetically pleasing than dectaine. So all about that phonetic pleasantry. In terms of substituents, we actually have three and they're all methyl groups and they're located at three, six, and nine. So three, six, nine trimethyl. Okay. So the name is going to be three, six, nine trimethyl. And then jump right into the parent chain name. Deco one, six diene. Up next, we have an alkyne. We want to number it so that we get to our triple bond as soon as possible. The way to do that is going to be one, two, three. And remember, this triple bond, single bond interface, these both count as carbons here. So this is carbon four. This is carbon five. Carbon six, seven, eight, and nine. So the parent name is going to be known for ein. All right. Now then. In terms of substituents, again, this one only has methyls as well. So there's a 2 and a 6, so the substituents are 2,6-dimethyl. So the full name is going to be 2,6-dimethyl known for ein. All right, here we have a cyclic triene. Ooh, all right, so we're going to combine a number of things here. So when numbering the ring, again, we want to make sure that we're giving our double bonds as low numbers as possible. So we could either theoretically start here and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or theoretically, we could get that one, three, five for the double bonds by starting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which of these is right? Now, in both cases, we hit our double bonds at one, three, and five. So we have one, three, and five versus one, three, and five. So either way, the double bonds are good. The next thing we want to do is check on our other substituents. If we start at this carbon here, notice that we get a methyl at, well, position one. Well, that's going to be better than the outer numbering, because if we do the outer numbering, notice that we don't get to another substituent until we go all the way around and get to six. So it's gonna be the inner numbering that we're going to use here. Because this is a cyclic molecule, we're going to have to again add cyclo, classic. And then there's seven carbons, so this is gonna be cyclohept. And because it is a triene, anything more than just a single double bond, we need to add our phonetically pleasing A into there. So it's gonna be hepta. And then one, three, five, triene. Okay. In terms of substituents, we have one methyl, and we also have seven chloro. Neat. Now we're ready to make our name. We're going to alphabetize, so M versus C. C comes first. And so our name is going to be seven chloro, one methyl, cyclohepta, one, three, five, triene. Cool. And that concludes our tutorial to naming alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.